Hey, how about you, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Wednesday, yes, January 24th of 2024. And I nailed that. Uh, we're going to have a, a great show. <laughs> Got a lot going on. Got a lot of things tapering off. That signing day, February signing day is not far off. We'll get to some of those things. Uh, we'll also get to uh, several questions from the corner here to address those questions. With me is Mr. Jay Head and Mr. Cole Pinkson. How about you, fellas? How about you? Hey, how about you? Big how, about you? how about you? No how about emotions you? for you tonight. They said this in a free zone, Jay Lee. You're done. You're done, yeah. son. I am. Uh, I, I'm, I, you know, it was, it was a tease. You know what I mean? They teased me. Like we discovered that accidentally. Yes. And then uh, uh, unintentionally. And then now that we're intentionally trying to take advantage of all these features. <laughs> Nothing to be found. It's it's very disappointing. It's very it disappointing. Kind, I'm kind of like never once. Day. I've never once gotten it. Yeah, you you're poor though, Cole. You got the uh, you got the uh, the Gateway 2000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this right. <here>. <laughs> the green <laughs> the green light. No, that was oh. the, the Gateway 2000. Jay had might be old enough to remember the Gateway. It was one of the first computers that came out. Like. Old school tower. My oh, brother had it. You talking about my internet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, gateway was a computer, and I absolutely. My dad had a gateway, which is why I'm dying laughing. And you remember the dial-up internet, Jeffrey? Oh, for sure. I Get remember the phone. That. I remember that. Get off the phone, <laughs> dude. No doubt. And my dad used to scream that upstairs at least twice a day. <clears throat> Get Can't off the phone. Doing up there. Oh my goodness. Um, all right, let's get to some recruiting. But before we do, last thing, real quick, man, I love some HelloFresh. I know how much I love that HelloFresh. And I, if you're not familiar with HelloFresh, you should be. What is it? Uh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep in boxes, in cool boxes, and cooler packed boxes. It's freaking awesome. It's, uh, it, I honestly didn't understand the concept at first, but when, when we first ordered it, and it came in. I was like, "Holy cow! Like this is first class, man. Uh, it's, for, it's first class. Forget those trips to the grocery store. If you want a meal ready, everything you need for a meal, uh, it, it got everything delivered right to your doorstep. It's fun. It's pretty. It's, fu it's fun because you make these complex dinners, but they make it so easily, man. Um, whether you're uh, wanting to save some money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is there to help you do it all. Three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet. Get started right now this year. Uh, fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes is, is professional stuff. Uh, each Hello Fresh is packed with that farm fresh ingredients, and everything arrives pre pre portioned right to your doorstep. Um, I know some of my favorites: the uh, the Tex Mex beef pies, the uh, family chicken. I got my notes up here. Oh, y'all probably shouldn't see that, but the family chicken sausage pizza fondue. Uh, <laughs> a lot of different ones, man. And listen, you can use um, you can use our promo code and get breakfast for life. Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Auburn Live free, all lowercase, all one word. Use the promo code Auburn Live free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Auburn Live free. Use that code Auburn Live free, all lowercase, all one word. All right, folks, let's um, let's let's get to uh, we're going to get to some questions. Now, as far as recruiting goes, we touched on this a little bit on the call in show the other night. But Auburn did have uh, at least a half dozen elite recruits again on campus on Saturday. We'll, we'll, we'll hit those real quick. Cole was there to bring you all the action. If you weren't on Auburn Live on three, you missed it because he had a running recruiting thread, which is fantastic. Everybody loves those threads. Cole, give us a quick recap of uh, of Saturday in Auburn. Yeah, um, Micah DeBose, who's obviously – I don't know if he's your number one offensive line target, but he's top five. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. Um one of the top 10 prospects on the on the board overall, I think. He was there. You know, I've got a prediction in for him to Auburn. I, I, I think that Auburn's probably got a slight edge with him, and it, it seemed like everything just went well. He spent the whole day with Jake Thornton um, and the offensive line coaches there. So, really important visit for him, I think. Probably see him back again in the spring. I don't know when he's going to make a decision. I'm not sure about that yet. But he said a top five is probably coming soon. So, usually when they get the top five, they get pretty close. Um, Caleb Cunningham, five-star mm. receiver from Mississippi, who Auburn uh, went to see Tuesday, I believe, Tuesday morning. Went to see him in person again. Um, 
seemed like it was going to be tough to get him out of the state of Mississippi and probably still is. But if anybody can do it, I, I'm starting to believe that Auburn might have a real shot at that. Uh, and boy, he had me convinced that he was going to Auburn after I talked to him. Some guys do that. Some guys have that way of talking that just make you go, wow, I would be shocked if you didn't end up at Auburn. DJ Barber was always a guy like that. To me, the, they're kind of similar in how they do interviews. So, Caleb Cunningham, man, I, I really do think Auburn's making a move right there. Uh, he said himself, Derek Nix going from Ole Miss to Auburn was a huge move. He said, Derek Nix was the reason I liked Ole Miss. Oh, <laughs> he straight up said that. And then he said, what I thought was interesting, he said, Derek Nix fits Auburn. That was his quote. And that means he's done his research on Auburn. He knows what would be a good fit at Auburn. So it's a lot nice. of things, a lot of things there, man, make me believe that Cunningham and Auburn's in the in the game with him pretty heavily. Um, Juju Lewis, I, I be honest with you, I didn't learn much about him. Uh, there you I go. Didn't, I didn't. He he doesn't. I don't think he's a excitable guy when it comes to interviews. I don't think he's, you know, I don't think he's trying to let you know what he's thinking too much, and that's fine. He says he's going to be back for seven on seven. We'll see how that goes. I know Auburn's going to continue to recruit him. They like him a lot. So, <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, who else? Was that everybody? That was the three. The, uh, big ones. Cameron Sparks was another guy. There you was go. There. Yep. That's a big one for sure. Sort of a hybrid t- uh, tight end wide receiver. Uh, ben Egamawa likes him as a tight end. A little bit on the smaller side right now, but he's got a frame he can grow into and be a bigger guy. Maybe an H slot kind of guy uh, yeah. for what Auburn's trying to do. I'm not sure. You know, I think he enjoyed his visit, said he's probably going to be back in the spring. We'll see how that goes. Not sure where he is on Auburn's board and vice versa. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. And then you know, the uh, 2026 kid, uh, Zeus. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's actually Zealous. Is it um, Zealous? Okay. Lord knows I can't see it, so go ahead, Cole. Get us straight there. <laughs> Zealous. Zealous Hicks was at Parkview with Jay Crawford, now at Buford. No? Where's he at now? Oh, the uh, Devin Williams was there, too. Yes, from Devin beginning. Williams. Yep. Speaking of Buford. Boy, Devin Williams. You know, he's at Buford. Devin Williams at Buford. Boy, he likes Wesley McGriff a lot. Um, that was the biggest takeaway for me. He really liked him. Weston McGriff greeted him at the door, gave him a big hug. I thought it was interesting. So he's probably a guy to monitor big time. I think he's going to be back in the spring. I and believe Zaylis Hicks goes to school with Julian Lewis now in Carrollton. Carrollton. That's it. Does, does, yeah. Zaylis transferred to Carrollton. He'll be at Carrollton this season. Um, his quote that stood out to me was, I'm coming back to Auburn whenever I get a chance. Whenever I get a chance. That was kind of how he ended it. When I get the chance, I'm coming back. And he was at two or three games this year. So, he he seems to be somebody that loves Auburn right now. We also saw uh, Hugh Freeze and the coaches go on the road. A lot of uh, in-home or whatever, in-school visits, kind of eval visits, I guess, meeting in, uh, in person with these guys. Especially important for Derek Nix to get on the road. Hugh Freeze and Charles Kelly, uh, they went, and I think uh, Crime Dog was with them. They went to Parker High School in Birmingham. They went and saw uh, uh, Alvin Henderson the running back. They also went and saw Cole. I think you mentioned this guy. Maybe it was Jay head. One of you two, uh, yes. a, a, a Kyle and deer. I wanted to mention him because there were rumblings. He was going to show up last Saturday. Uh, there was a good chance of it. I don't know what happened. He, maybe he did and we didn't see him, but you know, it's possible he did, but I, I don't think he did still think a visit's probably coming before the dead period. Maybe one of these last Saturdays, maybe February the third. I think they're going to have another small junior day that day. That's the guy that you need to keep an eye on, I think. Auburn is – Derek Nix was big on, on a Kyle and Deer when he was at Ole Miss, and now I think he's jumped up to the top right up there with Alvin, um, Alvin Henderson for that running back. I would not be surprised if Auburn takes two running backs this cycle. I think they want to. I think they got to, to be completely honest, to feel the numbers because you're definitely losing Brian Batie after this year. Yeah. I think Jarquez has a COVID year, but the likelihood of him returning – yeah. probably slim to none, I would think. And if he does, I would have to think somebody else in that running back room is going to hit the portal. So probably need to. Uh, and it's really good to see another target on the board. I think we were just talking yes. about 
one podcast ago, what does the running back board look like? We had no clue. And now you're starting to kind of see some of that shake out. And Deer was on the board before Derek Nix arrived. Auburn had already offered him, you know, recruited him a little bit to our knowledge. Don't know exactly how much. But with with Derek Nix involved now, you'd have to think Auburn becomes a factor. An, yeah. Another Mississippi kid, right? Yes. Yes. Quitman. Quitman, Mississippi. Quitman. Yeah. Mississippi. 6'1", 200. He's, he's a big back. Somebody on the board in that thread, he said, he just got no quit, man. That guy <laughs> watching his, his little tape. Total dad joke. It made me dad, laugh. Uh, we will get to some questions. Let's get to it, man. I, I know everything we want to talk about is going to be addressing these questions, so let's just get right to it. Questions from the corner. Get us started there, Zach, in the back. Number one. All right, question number one from the corner. Question from the corner. JMK205, best guess on 25 offensive line class as things stand right now. It's okay. a great question. I think we touched on it a little bit last week. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll give some uh, – we'll throw some names out there. I think Mikey DeBose is on everybody's list. Yes. Yeah. What Tavar. about the dice? Tavares mm -hmm. Dice, Don Trump Glover on my list yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Those are the three that stand out because I, I want to say Mal Waldrop, but I, I just don't – I don't know yet on that one. I, I, I'll have Mal on my board. Yeah. I'll have him. He's on the board. Is he a take over some other interior guys? That's what I don't know just yet. Right. And I, and that's kind of why I was asking Cole, do you think he can play center? Because I think if he can play center, that makes him a take it automatically. Because who else do you have in this class that they're really targeting there? Maybe Cortez Smith? Not yeah. exactly. Cortez was one. He was at two or three Auburn games this year. But I think Auburn might be trending down a little bit there and Georgia trending up. Wouldn't surprise me. You so, know what? Uh, speaking of Hugh Freeze and Derek Nix on the road, they went and saw Josh Petty. Big, big offensive yes, tackle from Eddie. Roswell, Georgia. Went and saw him this past week as well and throwing out some names that uh, look familiar. Uh, Braden Jacobs is another guy we'll be tracking extremely closely. I know they made a trip to see Juan Gaston. Now, yeah, I, I just passed him. I, I, well, now, when it comes to Juan Gaston and Josh Petty, these are these are your, you know, your Daniel Calhouns, the guy that's going to have everybody wanting them. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm nowhere near ready to say that Auburn can land that guy, but definitely in the race. Right now, I got you one, uh, Cole. Ty Buster, yes. Yeah. Oh, Ty, talked to him last Monday night. <laughs> Let's see here, Ty Buster. Um, uh, let's see, that's about the only names I think we mentioned Dontrell Glover, Glover, mm -hmm. uh, Cortez Smith. All right, so that's good. Those, those seven or eight names, if Auburn can get four of those guys, three to four of those guys, and you've got yeah. Spencer Dallin all already committed at a mm -hmm. Mount Waldrop. And you've got a damn good offensive line class. Here's number two, Sierra Putman. I wonder if that's a chick. <laughs> Saw Ryan Williams, five-star wide receiver from uh, – I always want to say Foley, but it's Sarah Land. It's Canceled it. his Texas visit. He did, uh, according to On3, Tuesday night, Ryan Williams is no longer going to Texas. He just came off an official visit to Alabama. He's got an official visit to Auburn scheduled for – Next weekend. Friday week or Friday? February 3rd. Okay, so. Friday week. So, Friday yeah. week. Okay. Uh, so, any insight into that? I I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It looks like he's, you know, Auburn, Alabama, which we've thought all along. Right. I'm watching Georgia with T. Rod oh, yeah. to see if he makes his way up to Athens. I know that he was – he visited Athens for a game this past fall. Does he make a return trip? Don't know, but I, I'm with you, Jeffrey. I think it's definitely an Auburn Alabama battle at this point. I agree. Yeah. As we said last week, man, cruise control, don't get too high, don't get too low. I know that's really hard for a lot of people to do, especially on the corner. Gosh, there's a handful of people that just freak out about everything that happens with them. Dude, just chill out, man. They've just been chill out. maybe a little more cold over the past week uh, than, than they have been. Maybe a little more calm about things. It's been It's been a good week on the corner. Yeah, chill, baby, chill. Oh, Cam, oh, Cam back kid 23. Which three freshmen will have the biggest impact by the end of the season? I'm going to go Cam Coleman, number one. Freshman, okay. Number two, let's go with who's my Jack outside linebacker? Waller. 
Or Jam- Joseph Will- Phillips. Let's go with Jamonte Waller. Because right now it feels like they're going to try to let Joe Phillips play inside, even though I think he's probably going to have to get snaps outside unless you can snag somebody in the portal. You just don't have enough depth there, in my opinion. Um, T.J. Lindsey? I know it's going to be hard for the front seven guys, but. I'm going to go with Morris Williams. Okay. Morris, Morris is number one for me. That was He was going to be my number one. Perry Thompson's my number two. And number three, I think, is probably going to be Cam Coleman. <clears throat> or Bryce Kane. I've heard a lot of good things about Bryce Kane lately. No, you, I mean, you're not lying. I mean, I think they love that kid. The, the question to me is they're so deep at slot. Yeah. With guys that have already been in the offense. Just, yeah, I'm looking at opportunity as well as talent. Right? I mean, this guy might be talented, but he's got, you know, two juniors and a senior ahead of him. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, and it's and also that's why I've got Cam over Perry right now, just because he's here in the spring. I, I think that's yeah, that, that helps. That helps a lot. Do, do, do you see any of the linebackers, whether it be Demarcus Riddick, DJ Barber, Joe Phillips, um, any of those guys being able to make an impact as a true freshman? That's tough. Well, man. honestly, is tough. You've lost, you've lost Cam Riley, yeah. who who was, I mean, you know, he maybe he may not have started, but he was going to help you. He was going to be a rotational guy for sure. That opens a spot for somebody. Is it Robert Woodyard who's been on there, or is it one of the freshmen? I, I think they probably start putting a freshman in there. Sure. Is it Robert Woodyard, Wesley Steiner? It, is it Demarcus Riddick, who we heard a lot of good things about as far as bowl yeah. practice, his raw athleticism, what he could do? I mean, he's none, none of the three would shock me. Even no. Barber. I, I think Barber has such a good instinct as a linebacker, he could probably get in there pretty quick. And they might feel even better about him because he knows what he's doing. And he acts like he knows what he's doing on tape anyway. So, you know, regardless, th- this might be the most excited I've been, just from a, not from a fan perspective, but just objectively, like this freshman class, I'm so excited and curious, anxious to see what they're going to do. Like, I really have a lot of high hopes. I'm, I'm not a freaking hot take or anything, but, you know, uh, everybody, a lot of people got high hopes for him, but. I usually come into these things with lower my expectations on these guys, but man, there's some studs in this class. This yeah. is probably the most excited I've been about a recruiting class as far as what the raw talent could be since that year that you got Sammy Coates, uh, Greg Robinson, Trey Mason, that group that came in together. I, I thought that was going to be a special group, and it ended up being a special group. I think Avery Jones was also in that group. Yeah. No, he, he wasn't. And that was actually. Uh, Avery Jones. Yeah, Avery Jones was the next year. Avery, I, Avery, Avery Young. Avery Young, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Avery oh, Young was actually the next year. Who was that guard from Arizona that they signed? He ended up transferring back out. Christian, Christian Westerman. That's Holy it. cow. Nice job. Nice pull. Nice pull. Yeah. But yeah, that was a good group. All right, let's see. Zalan11 wants to know, would you take the over-under at six spring portal commits? So – uh I mean, I, I, again, not a hot take the other day, but I did confirm that Auburn's done. I, you know, I, I thought maybe they could slip somebody in on a Sunday afternoon this past week and then try to get them in roll, but that, that was a no-go. They're done with the uh, the December spring window or the December portal window. Now all eyes will be on that spring portal window. And I believe, Jay head as we know, uh, as far as we know right now, Auburn has five spots. Five to six. It, I, I've gone back and forth. I think it could be 79 on scholarship because I believe I was counting a uh, a young man that's no longer on scholarship here. So I think it's actually closer to six. Okay. Uh, I'll need to recheck my numbers, but that's where I think we're at right now. And that's if you don't have any other attrition. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. So I would think the, the number of commits is going to mirror however many scholarships are available now and however yeah. many uh, become available after the spring. So I would definitely take over six. I yeah, I, I think that's safe. And maybe they can't get to the full 85. I mean, I know that, sure. we all, you know, once you get above 83, it starts to get difficult to find those last two spots. 83, it, 84, an award, a walk on a scholarship or something. Right. And I mean, I think that's usually how it goes. It just becomes hard to find guys like, because either you're trying, what you don't want to do is, you know, take somebody who's mid that's eating up your roster for, you know, three seasons. You don't want to do that. Right. And so if you can't find – you know what I mean? If you can't find somebody you really want, you're just tempted to take a one-year guy or, le- or lead the spot. Right. 
Oh, let's see. FMD, what does the O-line board look like? Hell, I wish I knew. Other than DuBose, Spencer Dowlin, and Cortez Smith, I'm not sure who we're actively after. Uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier, and some of those guys that we know of are top yeah. targets. Um, the, 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 the former Alabama commitment, you just named him earlier, Jay Head. Delane or something, Delone or – Dontrell Glover. Glover, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jay 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 he wasn't picking it up at all. No, man. I need a call to save you on that one. <laughs> oh, that dude. Um, yeah, Don Trell Glover, oh. Tavares Dice, um, our brand new offer, uh, Buster. Yep. The, the kid they went and visited. Oh, shit. I just said his name. Remember, the, the, the he's, from, he's from Georgia somewhere. Josh Petty. That's what I said. Yeah. Josh Petty, Juan Gaston. Juan yeah. Gaston. Those are all high end targets for this staff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Those guys we mentioned, get three or four of those guys. But you know, um, guys like Preston Talmua, DeAndre Carter showed up kind of late um, on, on our radar last year, like they closer do. to the summer. And think about the guys last spring who was hot and heavy on Auburn, like the kid who went to Penn State. Mm-hmm. I had a uh, what was that kid's name? Cole. He was e- from up Egan Egan Boyer. Egan Boyer. Boyer. That's it. And, and that kid that's uh, Cole's buddy, North Alabama. That guy, <laughs> Reese Baker. Reese, Reese Baker, Baker, who will forever have a stick on our board. <laughs> he's a, he's a corner <laughs> legend, man. He will. You know what? Somebody like had a post. Like, I wish I remember who it was. And it was like, you know, the meme of, are you a bot? And then it had Reese Baker like out beside it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I love it. But I think the difference in this year's class is, A, the depth in the, in the southern region of actual offensive line talent and proximity to Auburn. I mean, I, everybody we just talked about was within a 250-mile radius of Auburn. Sure. I would think so. Um, and, and I think they know a little bit better about what's in this class by comparison to last year. You're talking about Jake Thornton coming over from Ole Miss, Hugh Freeze coming in from Liberty. You don't really know what the expectation is for what you're trying to recruit. So I don't know that the board's going to change as much. I think you're still going to have some variation after spring eval. But I don't think it'll change as much as it did last year. Oh, Jay Milley, 160, wants to know, seems like coaches are eyeing down on K.J. Lacey and Juju Lewis for that quarterback spot. I uh, would not argue that. Who is the next option if we don't land either? Do you expect to be one of the two? Hmm. I will say this. I confirmed uh, Tuesday that what I said earlier about Philip Montgomery being gone pretty much takes Auburn out of the running for Ryan Montgomery, and that is the case. His father informed me that they're no longer looking at Auburn. So Ryan Montgomery's off the board. Okay. So Makes- now you've got a kid from uh, California. Oh the kid who committed to Colorado. Oh, yeah. He, he's he's not anymore. Antoine Hills oh, out here. Uh, that's just another name I'm trying to think of, uh, uh, of potentials. You have uh, TJ Latif who just put Auburn oh, in yeah. his top seven yeah. or eight. I, I don't know much to anything about him yet, but he's – He's on the list, I guess. Somebody to keep track of. Right. Do you take another stab at Deuce Knight, or is that completely out the window at this point? Um, no. George McIntyre's off the board to Tennessee now. Uh, yeah. Bryce Underwood's off the board to LSU, not that you were necessarily ever in that one. Uh, an interesting name that I've seen that we've offered is Caleb Bailey from North Shore, Houston, Texas. That's one I'm paying attention to, and I'm trying to get a better read on that situation. Uh, but I, I, I'm with you guys. I mean, I think real, right now all eyes are on Juju and KJ Lacey, and, and we'll just yep. kind of see what goes from there. You said uh, Caleb Bailey from North Shore. Do you remember the uh, the last quarterback from North Shore High School in Houston, Texas at Auburn Sign? Demetrius Davis, who's now Day. Yeah. Is that where he's still in school? I think so. He's at oh Alabama. Gosh, that Alabama feels State. like forever ago. Is he the yeah, starter? He, was he the starter last year at Alabama State? Yeah, he was a twenty twenty one kid. So yeah, yeah, he he'd be going into his senior year. All right, let's see. AU Tiger seven. Who is the starting slot receiver this fall? This is a great recruiting question. <laughs> Jay Fair or Bryce Kane? Fair. Me too. Ooh, 
Ooh, I want to go Bryce Kane. Get out of town. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not going to argue with that, Jay. And, 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 and because I'm going to tell you something. Jay Fair is somebody I'm going to keep an eye on this spring. Yeah. Very, very much. Yeah. So, there's a few, uh, there's, I mean, look, what just, I mean, you could still have a few guys enter the portal after spring, right? Correct. Now they can't you know transfer how- to other SEC schools because the February yeah. 1 deadline kind of mitigates their ability to do that. But Jay Ferris from Texas, there's nothing saying he couldn't decide he wanted to go back to TCU or some other place if he doesn't feel like he's getting the touches or snaps or what have you. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm watching that situation. And and I like what I've heard about Bryce. I'm going to be honest with you uh, yeah. to this point. Me too. And don't forget about Robert Lewis. Robert sure. Lewis. That's Caleb, right. Caleb Burton also can play Caleb in the Burton. slot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Malcolm Simmons could play slot or outside. So you've got a lot at like – a lot of talent that can play inside or out at that position. Do we know if Javarius Johnson ended up – has he made his decision on where he's going yet? He hasn't. I think he, he – well, I'm, I know he visited UCF, but no decision has been made there yet, and I'm tracking that one. It's interesting. Uh, AJ54, any basketball recruiting nugs to break up all the R-dub <laughs> questions? Uh, yeah, Bruce Pearl is uh, on the road in between the, all these games that are, they're playing. But he went and saw, according to Joe Tipton, I believe, he went and saw five-star Caleb Wilson uh, on Tuesday. Also, Auburn has um, had Malik Thomas in for an official visit. All these cats are five-star, by the way. Caleb Wilson, five-star. Malik Thomas came in for an official visit last weekend or two weeks, two weeks, in, two weekends ago. Uh, five-star official visit. Number seven player, Caleb Wilson is the number five player. And then the number – the number one overall player in the country, A.J. Dibansta, has set an official visit for Auburn March the 2nd, so that first weekend in March. So you've got the number one player in the country, you've got the number five player in the country, and the number seven player. Three of the top seven guys are taking official visits to Auburn. I mean, where? what universe is this? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Can you believe that? Three yeah. of the top seven players in the country want to come see what Auburn's about in the 2025 class, by the way. So, yeah, there you go, man. The, the, the visits are going to start picking up. They're going to be bringing in some kids for these game weekends. Um, and then, of course, when the spring gets here, they'll be a lot heavier on official visits. So a lot of stuff to track there moving forward with Bruce Pearl and those Tigers. Smark. Smark. S S Mark 8. Mark it. <laughs> Market. I'm trying to read that like a license plate. I know it's way too early. Okay. Well, ask anyways. But predict our 20. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to say pre 2025 class. Yeah. Predict it's finish. I'm going to say three to seven range. Smart. I would not argue with you. Would not argue with a three to seven range. Uh, I think we had it at four to eight. I'm going to make it more narrow than that. I think five to eight. That's, okay. that's where I'm, I'm at with it just because right now, I don't see the five stars that Auburn's in on other than Naheem offered. Obviously, he's a big one. And I don't know who else we're legitimately in with that's that massive, you know, five-star that can really kind of move your rankings. So I'm going to go five to eight. I think we're going to load up on high-end four-stars. I don't know that you're going to have as many five-stars as you had this past year. Now – Ranking shift and change all the time. Sure. So, you know, that, that that could obviously change. Let's see. Uh, well, I, how, about, how about this, Jay Head? Does Auburn improve on their number eight finish? From, I, I think they're better in 2025. Yeah. We'll I do. mean, honestly, I think they're going to finish seven or better. There you I'm, go. I, I'm handicapped. You know, I'm, I'm hedging here by putting five to eight. If the over under is seven and a half, yeah. I'm taking the under. Yeah. I, I think go. that's fair. Oh, Chuka, 1914. What 2025 recruit do you see having a similar impact to the class as Perry Thompson did to the 2024 class? A uh, statement recruit. A uh, statement recruit. Man, it's here, here's the problem with that, Chuka. It's so early for for us. Like We've talked to some of these guys once, right? I mean, mm-hmm. of course, we've talked to Alvin Henderson and the Mikey DeBoses when, when they visited, but uh, I'll try to give you an answer. Cole? LJ head. Um, well, you don't have a quarterback yet. Usually, I would say the quarterback. 
and there's yeah. not really. I mean, Malik Alter has been committed for a long time. He really has. Yeah. Who was the guy you talked to, to Saturday? It was like, you, you, oh, if it, it was Caleb Cunningham, and who was the other kid from Georgia that you were like, man, that kid wants, wants to come back to Auburn. That type of guy. Devin Williams. Kind of, was that who it was? It was like, I'm coming back every chance I get. Uh, it was Zealous Hicks. Zell, okay, well, he's 2026. 20, mm-hmm. Anyway, those are the type of guys, those are the type of kids, because I don't see a Walker White out there right now in the quarterback room. No, uh, and Perry had so much juice on the trail and credibility with other recruits. That was the thing that was attractive about him. When you pulled that flip off, that was an absolute shot at Alabama because we took your top recruit out of your class. Um, Man, I don't know. Yeah, Do I don't you know. think That's- if uh, Alvin Henderson were to get on board? Yeah. He's, he's the guy that – he's a pretty vocal guy. You, you know, I'm thinking of guys – I'm, Yeah, I'm just trying to think of that type of kid that Auburn's in on it with. I think know. Alvin's got some juice. He's connected to other kids. Yeah. But I, I hear you. I hear well, you. In, in today's world, you uh, honestly, you have to How look at – How much weight social, does that juice hold? I'm sorry, Cole. How much weight does that juice hold? Cole, go ahead. You have to look at social media a little bit. Because like mm-hmm. Antonio Coleman still has like Alabama stuff on his Instagram and Twitter, like he he ain't checking his social medias. So I, I don't know if I would go with him. Alvin Henderson's real active on Twitter. He's a guy that would probably you know be real supportive of Auburn and you like come you know come join the fam you know that kind of stuff with the guys. Sure. I, that's why I would think him he would probably be a good one. I give you two names that I think could really create some momentum in this class. Uh, Zion Grady and what happens there. I think that absolutely can give you a shot in the arm. And Eric Winters. I mean, I, I think that kid is an underrated athlete. To me, yeah. he, he's a kid that can – he can be a DeMarcus Riddick type in this class. I think that can give you a, a major shot in the arm if you get that one in sooner rather than later. It can kind of be a leader for you to pair along with any quarterback that you get in this class. Because I'm assuming – I think we all are that they're going to they're gonna land a 2025 quarterback. I don't sure. think they can skip out on this class. So who they get that can pair along with, with Eric Winters, I think he might be the guy. Eric Winters could easily sneak up on that five-star threshold. Yeah. The way that he plays. I, I talked to somebody who definitely would know while in the complex, and they said he is getting very close, razor thin close to running a 4-4, to being under a 4-5, legit 40 time. Now he he scored a four or five several times at different camps last year, just as as a uh, a junior uh, going into his junior year. So I mean, so he's guy, almost as fast as Cat Williams. <sighs> Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I bet I you, be, I bet you, Edward knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Eric Winters, Auburn also went to, by to see him. They were very active on the recruiting trail this week. Yes. Or this past few days, they went to see Eric Winters. They also went to uh, see Derek Smith. Marcus Davis was down there, thanks to old kid country. Derek Smith. Uh, kid from Selma. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Davis was down there seeing Derek Smith. Uh, but he, he he's not very vocal. Hell, I don't even know that he tweets. Honestly, I'm thinking about guys who are vocal. Malik Autry is probably the most vocal yeah. of everybody. Yeah. yeah. These guys don't talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of yeah. the guys at Auburn are, are his own right now. Jordan Crawford, man of few words. Uh Antonio Goldman, they're just, kind of the same way. It, maybe these kids they're 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 kind of like uh, is it our turn yet? I will you know, say now is, Jordan Crawford's pretty active on social media and he's pretty out there for Auburn. So that might be a guy. But you know, Malik he's gonna keep rising. We we've seen Malik these past couple of weeks. Sure, he went to Florida last weekend, obviously, yeah. and, and you're gonna see him do that. But as far as being a cheerleader and sending out the fat bat, yeah, fat back, fat fat bat signal, the fat bat signal. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could see him being the guy who's who's chirping with Zion Grady, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, getting him in. So I, I, that would be the best guess I have right now. Right, yeah. I'm just thinking that who's that player that other guys want to play with? Yeah, right. You know right. I mean? like that's right, that's right. the draw to me. Who's that guy? I think, and I'll tell you this: I don't think we're. I think you're either going to get one or the other, but Jaden Perlotti could be that guy. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, Very like, good. Very even good J.J. Role. J.J. Falk even sure. could play that role. Right. I've been seeing um, J.J. Falk at camp since he was in, like, ninth grade being a popular guy at camps and things like, you know. So, But I'm going to be honest. It feels to me like you're either going to get Eric Winters or you're going to get Jaden Perlotti. You're not going to get both. Okay. Well, I, know yeah. where my, I know where my guess would go. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think Jaden Pilate is going to stick with Georgia. And if you're Auburn, you're going to push Jaden Pilate because if you feel that way, you want to make sure that Georgia's putting in some time to keep Jaden Pilate in your class and not recruiting Eric Winters to sure. Yeah, right. Uh, let, let's see uh, what's coming up. What's coming up? We don't really know of any like big junior days. You know, last January twenty eighth, Auburn had a huge. It was overwhelming. It was, it was terrible. You know, yeah. remember when like a hundred kids showed up for that junior day, and I believe, yeah, oh, man, it was awful. It was two hundred for us. <laughs> was it two hundred? Two hundred and four was the final count, if I remember correctly. Great day in the morning. And I don't think they intended for it to be that big, but then right. people, I mean, they got like the code or whatever it was. They, code, yeah. they have the not code. done another QR code since then. I know that. They're like, Cole no, talked about anything. this last week, man. I love what they're doing these weekends in January. They're getting six, eight guys coming in and they're spending all freaking day one on one, face to face, building relationships, building that foundation moving forward. It's, it, 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 that's huge. I love that. They are it's, so much further ahead. Cole, Cole go ahead. Is there a basketball game this coming Saturday at home? No, they're on the road in yeah. Starkville. Okay. That might be why we haven't heard much about weekend visitors. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've been trying to see, you know, checking around. I haven't heard of anybody that's going to visit. Now, I am the February 3rd. I don't know if that is that's, that's going to be that's right Ryan before. Williams week. Okay. That's Ryan Williams weekend. Week. They're trying to have some visitors then. For okay. sure. That, that would make that's, sense. That's going to close out the – when you go into the dead period. I think that's the last weekend. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. It sure oh, is. February is dead, and then it opens back up in March. When spring practice and all that starts, which I've had several people tell me now, I mean, pretty much every big target and then some, I will be at a spring practice at Auburn. So that's when your next visits. March Auburn. is going to be bit busy. April yes. uh sixth, the first Saturday in April is a day, so they'll they'll culminate the the uh, the spring practice in April. Yep. So you're looking at guys coming to practices, which is huge. We, yeah. I tell you what, I didn't realize. I'm mean, not sure I realized it, but last year more people talked about it, and I guess it was because Hugh was new, the the systems were new, the coaches were new, and these kids were coming in. That was a big deal for them to see them practice and to see um, see them see for, uh, up close and firsthand. What Auburn looked like on the practice field, so that was a big deal. So, I, I, yeah, like Cole said, March I remember should last be very busy. You know, the the whole crew, um, you know, twenty four seven rivals, all of us were sitting up there in the lobby, and all of a sudden, shared on the, all on the corner on everybody's board was a Snapchat of Perry Thompson at Auburn's practice, and we we're like, how did he? How did what? He's here. <laughs> like, how did that happen? You know, so no, it, it they definitely. I think it surprised us some last year with the kids they were able to get in and when they were able to get them in. But right now, to me, what you're seeing that's the most impressive is how organized they are by yeah. comparison to this time last year, how much more in sync everything seems to be and coordinated as far as visits and yes, getting you out and knowing the targets they want to go see and everything mm -hmm. else it feels so different 365 days removed from that transition that they were going through. Man, that's what I, that's what I've been trying to say too on these calling shows, guys, you know, I understand year one didn't go exactly how you, you want it to, but boy, the plan is so clear with this staff. I can just see it. And, and it feels like they are on the right path to getting that roster, right. Just from an outside observer and, and a, you know, getting to, hear from them too but um that that's the way it's supposed to be like you just described it jay head it's not supposed to be like you're scrambling at this time you're trying to trying to get guys to come visit and oh you know i don't even know how to structure my board yet they already know their board they know who's yeah. at the top it, it kind of felt that way last year at this time scrambling that's exactly what I like like who can we get in this class mm -hmm. let's get some momentum let's get some juice well, now you're sitting there with what nine commits in the class, number six, you know, number seven ranking. Really, it, you know, what I mean, you already know who your targets are. Yeah, you're going to ID some guys in spring, okay? Because it yeah. happens every year where you're going to walk across them like, wait a minute, that kid put on fifty pounds and added three inches to his frame in an off season. What the hell happened here? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, 
that right. kind of thing happens more than you would think of late bloomers. But no, I'm with you, Jeffrey. Like it just, everything flows so much better. And then once they get the defensive coordinator here and you know exactly what you're looking for in certain positions, the defensive side of the ball, they're already set on offense. They know what they're doing. They know what they're looking for. They know who they're targeting. Defense, I think there's still some variable for change there just because sure. you know exactly what system you're going to run just yet. Even though I'm with Cole, I think it's going to be similar. You're probably going to run a multiple front defense, you know, two high safety looks, or are you going to run match in the back end? Are you going to, you know, I mean, are you going to run more man? Are you going to run more zone? What are you going to do from that standpoint? Uh, but I don't know how many different body types or frames are going to bring in for certain positions. Like that's what we don't know just yet. Like, do you have a type? And so that, that leads some unassuredness there, but no, I just, I'm with you guys. It just feels so different. And it feels like Alabama's on the other side of this now where they're scrambling a little bit and there's going to be a hell of a lot of attention. They're going to have to put into the portal in the spring portal just mm-hmm. to fill holes to get. Their oh, yeah. yeah. Auburn's looking for six guys. They may be looking for 16. You right. know I mean, I, I didn't realize they had lost 28 guys to the portal. I saw your post. I was like, oh, my. Wow. Yeah. That's I had no idea. That's pre, that's pre and post saving, 28 total, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's 30 total, but I'm taking off the two walk-ons that, you know, like, whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Oh, well, well, a lot, lot going on. We're going to be tracking it all at Auburn Live on three. If you haven't already, go check us out, man. I think they've got a $1 special, obviously, with the YouTube code. You can get two months for $1. AU1, capital A, capital U, one that is between all of us. Do not tell anybody. One more time, uh, go check out HelloFresh, man, especially if you're a single cat or if you want to impress your lady. <laughs> Give it HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Auburn Live Free. Use that promo code <clears throat> Auburn Live Free. Subscribe to there. You'll get your free breakfast for life. Um, how about some how about you's before we get out of here? Yeah. Um, I want to give War Dan Eagle. Okay. How about you? All the meat for free. All right. <laughs> he had me rolling. Um, and I got one more. Give me just a second. Dude said I got to stop smirking in the camera. I'm risen him up over there. <laughs> <laughs> As he sits over there and sits on his Bud Light. Ooh, <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> oh, suspense is killing us, big dog. I you know. Want, I know, you man. You want me to give mine while you look, Jay Head? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. All right. I got. Um, Coach Rob, I got Hag Daddy, and Jeremy Redding. <clears throat> okay. Coach Rob, C-O-H-C-O-A-C-H-R-O-B. Coach, Coach Space Rob. Okay. Hag, H-A-G, Daddy. Hag Daddy, yep, that's it. Uh-uh. All right, and Jeremy Redding. All right, I've got a few. I've got a few. I'll run down these real quick. Jay, you you got a – Yeah, I got him right now. Okay. It's D-Cone 24, and that's D, or capital D, capital C. He's o- on my list too, big dog. Yeah, oh, yeah. D-Cone times two, big dog. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he he, he killed me. He slayed me, man. I, I actually fell off my toilet. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> and he got on mine uh, late Tuesday night, like before recording this. I was like, yeah, man. yeah he was a late addition. He was a late Ooh. addition. D-Cone 24, how about you, big dog? Uh, how about you to uh, AU Alpha Eagle 89? How about mm. you, Peter? How, how about you to Coastal Tiger? How about you to Jink, Jink, Jenkins, I'm guessing, Jink 03? Mm-hmm. How about you to Ziff Nab 316? That's a good one. How about you to Buck 1988? Buck 1988, he's having back surgery, man. Y'all keep him in your thoughts, prayers, mm. whatever you do, man. Definitely teasing Good me. fella. Uh, how about you, Buck? Be thinking about you, man. Let us know when you get uh, get out of there. Uh, how about you to Prime Time Lane? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how about you? Believe it or not, I had to double check to make sure this was it. But I freaking it. How about you to Cole's boy Ashley Schaefer? Oh, Cole, Ashley. Cole's face. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did Ashley Schaefer do? Oh, I, I, what I, mean? I, I I didn't think I, I thought y'all had a little little beef. Do we? 
little. I don't know. Did it not? I, I said know. I can. I can feel the tension down in my oh, oh yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm cool. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. We're cool. We're good. Okay, yeah. cool. How about you, Ashley's favor? All right. He 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 killed me <clears> one <throat> night. Um, all right. Well, great list of how about you? As Cole said, man, the corner's been fantastic. If you haven't already, go give us a try. Auburn Live on three. Check it out. We'll be back Sunday night with the call in show. Uh, meet us back here 6 30 on our YouTube channel. Thanks to everyone on our call in show, all our YouTube subscribers. We hit 9,000. We greatly appreciate it, man. We're absolutely grateful for all of you. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and uh, click those notifications to get them put on. So every time we uh, have a video come out, you'll know immediately and probably get it watched and listened to before we even get it put on the board. 